I didn't run when I was younger. I swam. The opposite of running in some way. Except in the Pacific Northwest, some days they're pretty much the same thing. My school had a cross-country team. It was my school's only sports team. We had a soccer field and a one-way, U-shaped paved road around the school grounds. No track. Just a road framed by a skinny forest that dipped down towards the river. We did laps of it in gym class. No escape, round and round, on a road that connected my school to the world. In grades seven and eight, my class color was red. The gym t-shirts seemed always to be men's sizes. I went to an all-girls school. Red is fast. I was fast. But aren't most 14-year-olds? Red is the burn of the East Coast fall air igniting my lungs halfway through the first lap. I never joined the cross-country team. Swimming was my sport. I stopped swimming competitively at 15. Academics over athletics, mind over body. To be an athlete is to be an exception, or a teenager. One day you're winning medals and trophies, the next, sports are over and your focus is turned to career, family, responsibilities, serious pursuits, not play. Yet, young athletes are lauded, elevated to superhero status, promise scholarships, multi-million dollar professional contracts. Body over mind. The exception to the rule. That's not play either. Are sports frivolous? Or are sports everything? Most of us have this very all-American concept of sports ending in high school or in university. Most of us don't have athletic careers. Most of us stay active because we have to. That's what we're told we're supposed to do, for health. And let's face it, for looks. Athletes go to the Olympics. You and I go to Pilates or drive to the gym praying there's a free elliptical machine. Maybe you still have a pickup basketball team with your high school friends, or you play ultimate frisbee every Tuesday before beers in the parking lot. But do you know anyone in their 30s earnestly calling themselves an athlete? Maybe they use the word skier, or soccer player, or runner. Maybe even those words are hard to say. We gatekeep the word athlete. It's for professionals and demigods. It's exclusive and loaded with fame and glory, pressure and publicity, status and financial gain. We're comfortable putting other people in boxes, but balk at assigning ourselves one. In a way, it makes sense. Time for sports is a privilege. Access to sports is a privilege. A Canadian study shows one in three girls leave sports in late adolescence as opposed to one in 10 boys. That was me, one in three. The Women's Sports Foundation reports that in the US, girls have 1.3 million fewer opportunities to play high school sports than boys. And by 14, drop out at twice the rate. Me again, at 15. What these studies don't mention either is in order for high schoolers to enjoy their privileged sports years, their parents and their mothers especially are dedicating time and energy to practice pickups and drop-offs, tournament chaperoning, schedule juggling, meal prepping, and laundry. If the mere participation in sports isn't for everyone, then being named and recognized as an athlete is truly only for the select few. So, what if we staged a comeback? What if we joined a team? Signed up for a race? What if we simply gave ourselves a chance to play? I'm a payback athlete. A revenge runner. I'm gifting myself what I wanted back then. Both community and performance. Being an athlete barely started in my teens, so in a way, it didn't really end either. The only thing that's supposed to end at 17 is high school. Everything else is set to begin. My running has noticeably improved in the last three years. This shocks me. Learning new things is harder when we get older, but getting better at them is an exhilarating reward. And it excites me. It makes me curious because I know now that if I want to push further, harder, 
faster, there's endless unknown to expand into. Still, I don't have an athletic career. I would never call it that. But I do call myself a runner and a swimmer and many other things. I do athletic stuff. I have a relationship with sports. My body and my mind are involved. I still run in circles sometimes, but in much bigger forests. You can call yourself whatever you want, but whatever sport you love, whatever sport you play, the greatest comeback is always when you find your way back to yourself.